Did you see that I went on Bill Maher? Do you think that the liberal establishment media is meaningfully more reliable than the conservative media? And if so, why? Or do they ultimately represent the same interests and not give enough variety of opinion? Hello there you six million awakening wonders, thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth and freedom. A voyage that will involve self-scrutiny, honesty, a willingness to listen to other people's views and opinions in order that we might forge something new, interesting and valuable together. Something truly inclusive, something truly capable of challenging establishment narratives. If you don't subscribe to our channel yet, subscribe right now and turn on the notification bell. We make these videos all the time. We're on hiatus from our Rumble show at the moment, but we'll be back on Monday the 13th with new shows every day, so find us there as well. Now, I went on Bill Maher the other day and I had a conversation about the mainstream media, in particular the differences between MSNBC and Fox News. My perspective is that all mainstream media outlets are so beholden to corporate and commercial interests that they will not give you the type of information you need to make valid decisions about the way that systemic power operates. That's my position. So I don't think Fox News is the answer. I don't think MSNBC News is the answer. But the person that I was on the show with, John Hellman, is an MSNBC anchor and he was obviously advocating for MSNBC. Just to be clear, he's a human being and I've got, I love and respect all human beings. But what I want to say is that I truly believe that MSNBC are also a corporate media outlet have incredible biases and prejudices that relate to their funding, their political biases, and some important distinctions around liberal establishment media that I think are worth analysing. So let's have a little look at the appearance on Bill Maher, and then we'll talk about why I think MSNBC, if they're better than Fox News at all, aren't better enough. John, I've not known you long, but mm. I love you already. But I have to say that it's, <laughs> it's disingenuous to claim that the biases that are exhibited on Fox News are any different from the biases exhibited on MSNBC. It's difficult to suggest that's, that's... that these corporations operate as anything other than mouthpieces for their affiliate owners in BlackRock and Vanguard. And, and unless we... I'd call that a light smattering of applause at the mention of the name BlackRock and Vanguard, and indeed, two of the biggest investors in MSNBC are BlackRock and Vanguard. We'll unpack that a little more in a minute. I've been on that MSNBC, yeah. mate. It was right. propagandist nutcrackery yeah. you're, you're on there. Having, you, I went on the show called Morning Joe. Yeah. It was absurd the way they carried <laughs> Good on. Morning Joe. Yes. Yeah, it, I don't it. know what it was. It wasn't morning. There was no one called Joe there. No one could concentrate. They didn't understand the basic tenets of journalism. No one was willing to stick up for genuine American heroes. Uh, like Edward Snowden. No one was willing to talk about Julian Assange and what he suffered trying to bring real journalism to the American people. Actually, the motivation of this video isn't aren't I good. The motivation is there's a lot of things that I wish I'd been able to say that I didn't say because I was on the television and I couldn't concentrate properly. Here are some facts about MSNBC that are, in my view, truly startling and at very least cause for a genuine analysis about the role of the media in our culture. And when we look at the pandemic, and I don't want to dwell there because I think it's revealed enough to us, the stuff they said about unvaccinated people, the stuff they said about mask mandates, the stuff they said about vaccinations, all of it subsequently looks like it was worthy of a lot more conversation. And it's difficult to imagine that MSNBC's financial relationship with for example, Pfizer, did not influence their reporting on, for example, vaccines. Maybe I'm being incredibly cynical. Let me know in the chat, let me know in the comments if you think that MSNBC's relationship with Pfizer affects the way they talk about Pfizer. Or maybe that financial relationship with Pfizer doesn't affect the way that they talk about Pfizer. So I'm essentially saying that the vanity of small differences has become this celebrated battlefield where everyone's willing to shout and scream, oh, we would never do that on MSNBC. But look at what you do do on MSNBC. I believe that we deserve an open media. That's why I'm working in these spaces in order to participate in open conversations, because guess what? I might be wrong about stuff. You know things I don't know. I don't want a media that talks down to me, and I know you don't either. I don't want a media that's owned and co-opted by financial interests to such a degree that it's never going to tell you the truth because it simply can't. Okay, so the story that John Hailmans was referring to was this one. Recent depositions reveal that high-level Fox News network officials privately cast doubt on Trump's claims that the election was stolen, even as on-air voices were backing Trump up on the false narrative. So if they were backing Trump up because of a political alliance that's ideological 
rather than authentic and they were willing to say stuff on air that they didn't believe in, I would argue that that's wrong, would you? Let me know in the chat and the comments. It'll be wrong if it's the side you like did it, it'll be wrong if the side you don't like did it. See, if you have principles, those principles are going to cost you sometimes. Of course we don't have access to the text messages exchanged between MSNBC or CNN anchors about, for example, the pandemic or, for example, the war. So we don't know what they say in private, but we do know that in the 2016 election there were lots of claims of electoral fraud. Let's have a look for a moment about how they were handled on the liberal establishment media side. In November 2021, an analyst who was a key contributor to Democratic-funded opposition research into possible links between Donald Trump and Russia was arrested and charged with lying to the FBI about his sources. The analyst, Igor Danchenko, was a primary researcher for claims that went into the so-called Steele dossier, a compendium of rumours and unproven assertions suggesting that Trump and his 2016 campaign were compromised by and conspiring with Russian intelligence officials to help him defeat Hillary Clinton. What have you got to back up these claims of collusion and collaboration? Well, we've got a compendium of rumours and unproven assertions. Oh, well, that'll do. Let's put that on the news. The Danchenko indictment doubled as a critique of several media outlets that covered Steele's reports in 2016 and after its publication by BuzzFeed in January 2017. CNN, MSNBC, Mother Jones, the McClatchy newspaper chain and various pundits showered credibility upon the dossier without corroboration. I liken this too to the recent revelations in the Twitter files that there's collaboration between the deep state and social media outlets. Do you imagine that similar relationships don't exist between conventional media outlets and the deep state? Let me know in the chat and the comments. But nevertheless, if we want to indulge this vanity, what did MSNBC really think about Trump? Prior to the 2016 election, MSNBC gave massive airtime to Trump on behalf of the DNC, which saw Trump as the most easily defeatable candidate. You'll be aware that the Biden administration has funded MAGA candidates in order to manipulate electoral outcomes. That's not the kind of political ideology that I want to back. In its self-described Pied Piper strategy, the Clinton campaign proposed intentionally cultivating extreme right-wing presidential candidates, hoping to turn them into the new mainstream of the Republican Party in order to try to increase Clinton's chance of winning. Part of the problem, of course, as well, is that similarly, MSNBC and CNN benefited from Trump deify Trump, require Trump. In fact, what a perfect example for the whole damn Farago. The fact is that they both benefit from figures like Donald Trump that are divisive and incendiary and drive eyeballs to the screen, to their channels, for whom? They're advertisers. Not because they truly care, but just that's the way that the business model works. Trump fueled a five-year run of record ratings and profit for Fox News, MSNBC and CNN that began when Trump first ascended the escalators of his eponymous Midtown Manhattan Tower in June 2015 to announce his candidacy for president. CNN generated an average of a billion dollars in profit annually for its parent company, AT&T, thanks to its coverage of Trump. CNN and Fox News became among the greatest profit generators for their corporate parents, and MSNBC began to catch up as well. In 2018, the year after Trump took office, their revenues jumped by 4% to $5.3 billion. $5.3 billion. That's a lot of hatred for Trump. Maybe though, as was claimed on The Bill Maher Show, MSNBC are motivated not by profit, but by their ideals. Let's have a look. MSNBC is owned by Comcast, which is a charity that helps children in Africa. Oh no, sorry, which is a subsidiary of General Electric, the 14th largest defence contractor in the US. Oh, when are these children going to get helped? And the homeless too. The top three institutional shareholders for MSNBC are, wait for it, Vanguard, BlackRock and State Street Corp. Now, unless State Street Corp is something to do with Sesame Street, that's not a good look. Here is what you will not hear on MSNBC. You will not hear experts who criticise insurance or pharmaceutical companies, and you will not hear experts who criticise Wall Street. Remembering, of course, that Wall Street owns the insurance and pharmaceutical companies. Neither MSNBC nor Rachel Maddow ever called out Wall Street for its influence of elections. In 2016, Wall Street contributed $184 million to candidates and parties. In 2022, MSNBC aired an interview with a New York Times columnist blaming inflation on workers getting COVID relief money rather than on corporations using their monopoly power to fleece consumers with higher prices that then fund giant executive pay packages and shareholder dividends. This is one of the contentions I have, if I may say, with the conservative media. I don't think that there is any left-wing media because if you had a left-wing media, which it would be impossible in the corporate space, they'd be saying things like, hey, listen, we're gonna have to do 
something about the corporatization of American political life. That's what they'd say. They'd have to say, the pharmaceutical giants are making too much money, the insurance companies are making too much money, the arms industry is making too much money. No one's able to say that because they're all owned by the same interests. You will not hear criticism of our demented war budget, but GE does let war material competitors like Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin and Boeing take out pricey ads on their networks. Stories that lead watchers to criticise any of these entities are likewise spiked. Many of the retired military leaders employed by the networks as paid contributors have secondary affiliations that are rarely, if ever mentioned, leaving viewers in the dark about whose interests they're promoting. A responsible news network would say, here is this person who we're presenting to you as a military expert, but we want to tell you also that they sit on the board of Raytheon or Lockheed Martin, just so you know there are some biases at play. That's what an alternative, a genuine alternative media source would look like. Let me know in the comments and chat if you agree. None of the leading networks, including MSNBC, makes a regular practice of announcing its military analyst financial ties to the Pentagon, connections that could colour their on-air comments. During its Ukraine coverage, MSNBC even failed to include disclosures when the network invited on former Homeland Security Secretary Jair Johnson, who serves on the board of directors at Lockheed Martin, the world's biggest defence contractor. Now, of course, I wouldn't make any glib claims about MSNBC's relationship with Lockheed Martin or Jair Johnson's relationship with Lockheed Martin, but personally, I think it's relevant if you sit on the board of a weapons manufacturer and then go on the television and say that there should be a war and that we should spend your money, public taxpayer money, on weapons. As Julian Assange said, the function of government is to extract public money and put it into the hands of private companies. How often over the last few years have you seen that template play out? MSNBC now regularly features Bill Crystal. That's not Billy Crystal out of Harry Met Sally and Monsters Inc, who I like and I believe is against war, who bears major responsibility for the bloody 2003 invasion of Iraq and one of the ineffectual godfathers of the neoconservative agenda taken up by the Bush Cheney White House. Again, that's not Billy Crystal, who was not involved in Iraq and I believe was, generally speaking, suspicious that they would ever find weapons of mass destruction. John Goodman! <laughs> Cable news viewership jumped during Russia's invasion of Ukraine. CNN, Fox and MSNBC collectively averaged 6.4 million viewers in prime time, up from their January average of 4 million. So not only are they connected to the military industrial complex through their ownership by Comcast and ultimately General Electric who make money through selling weapons, but they drive viewers to their channels through reporting excessively on the war. As George Carlin taught us, there is no need for conspiracy when there's a convergence of interests. Phil Donahue's 2002 programme, Donahue, was cancelled in late February 2003 during the build-up to the Iraq War. Despite earlier statements tying the cancellation to low ratings, Donahue was MSNBC's highest rated show that month. A leaked NBC internal study revealed that the studio was concerned that Donahue would act as a home for the liberal anti-war agenda at the same time that our competitors are waving the flag at every opportunity. So it seems that there is a historic tendency to extract voices that are anti-war or inconvenient for what I would broadly describe as corporate interest. For me, that is not a description of a channel that is meaningfully better than their declared opponent, Fox News. Let me know in the chat. But I'm sure that's all there is to it. I bet other than Trump and being funded ultimately by the weapons industry and driving eyeballs to the screen via war and not declaring interest and they're reporting on the pandemic and their inability to apologise for the neglectful and incorrect reporting throughout the pandemic and their accusation that anti-vax people should be shamed and all of that stuff. Other than that, I reckon they're an ethical organisation so different from any other media outlet. Oh no. News outlets entrusted with promoting transparency and privacy are also lobbying behind closed doors against proposals to regulate the mass collection of Americans' data. The IAB represents both data brokers and online media outlets that depend on digital advertising, such as CNN, The New York Times, MSNBC, and Fox News. In a letter, IAB called for the FTC to oppose a ban on data-driven advertising networks, claiming the modern media cannot exist without mass data collection. The industry has grown in leaps and bounds, now generating billions in revenue. The lobbying reveals a tension that is rarely a centre of the discourse around online privacy. Major media corporations increasingly rely on a vast ecosystem of privacy violations, even as the public relies on them to report on it. So there you have it. The mainstream media establishment, whether you're talking about conservative or liberal, in this case we're focusing on MSNBC because of course that public appearance 
led to the claim that MSNBC are significantly better than Fox News. But we've just heard that they are significantly connected to the weapons industry through their ownership. They support the war and allow other military industrial complex figures to promote war on their channel. We're aware of how they behaved during the pandemic and how negligent their reporting was. They benefited from Trump. They capture your data, package it and sell it. So is this an organization that you think is pure and valuable? Do you think that this is the best that we can do for the American people? Do you think this is the function of the media? Because this is what I believe is possible for the media. You can have transparency, accountability, authenticity, integrity, an open conversation with your viewers that's not based on piety, pomposity, judgment and condescension, that we are together looking for better ways to organize society, create better systems, hold the powerful to account and create systems where they aren't so powerful, address many of the legitimate issues in American contemporary life that are causing division and conflict. Are MSNBC any better than Fox News? Do you think you deserve a better, more open media space? Let me know in the chat, let me know in the comments, because in the end, it's you that answers these questions, not the media. The media are just supposed to give you information and then you decide for yourself because you're adults, you're intelligent, and we're awakening together. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I've just told you, if you enjoyed this video, watch either of these, turn on the notification bell and subscribe. We will not misuse your data. That's another pledge we can offer you. Join me every day on Rumble and become a member of our community over there. Until then, if you can, stay free.